All right, and continuing our spot illustration. In the last five videos, we learned how to take our refined sketch vision and turn it into clean line art. So I have it listed here as clean black line art. And that was done in PhotoP, all with raster programs. So if I open up PhotoP and I bring my PSD into it, which could also be opened in Photoshop if you have it, this is what I have. I have different line weights. And they, these were all traced on top of my refined sketch. So these were the steps. Some of you are still working on this. First, I made a layer that was white on top of it that I took down in opacity to about 60% to onion skin it. And then I started using the brush tool. And this is my first pass. And tried different thicknesses with the brush tool. Every time you open PhotoP, it resets the defaults. So I was using a smoothness setting of about 35, 40. I was using a pressure sensitive brush with a tablet. And obviously here I was starting with a pretty large size. When you're digitally inking in a raster file, it's important to do it at a high enough resolution. So my image size here is, was the equivalent of 10 inches by 10 inches, roughly by 350. Okay, the problem was that I started with really thick lines and then by the bottom was finding I needed much thinner lines to kind of fit everything in. And then I really worked to kind of refine those. This is what's cool about digital inking compared to inking by hand, which is another method sometimes people do. And then they'll color it digitally. Um, but after this step, you can take that digital inked line. Here, I'll turn off the sketch. And you can select it because now they're just pixels, right? So if I use my magic wand with contiguous on, and I select this really heavy line, then I can duplicate that onto its own layer. Command J. And now if I want to thin this really heavy line, what can I do? I double click it and I click on stroke. And then instead of a black stroke on it, I put a white stroke on it. And now with that white stroke, instead of making it on the outside, which you can't even see because it's white on white, and I want to thin this line, I'm actually going to put it on the inside. And then I can make it bigger and bigger. And the bigger I make it, the more it will thin out my line art. So that's a really, really handy trick for refining what's called your line weight. Now it might look really good here, but then as I thinned it out, notice that underneath, it got too thin. So I need to like erase that back out and show what was underneath. So there's all kinds of ways and basically, what I needed to do since last class to refine my line art is to play with the line widths, which I did here. So now, I have the line, eights, the line widths where I want. I feel like I want it to be a little thicker at the top where it starts. And I also thickened these a little bit. And I thickened these in the same way. You can see how they got thickened just by adding a stroke to them. And this time the stroke I made was black. And on the outside, I have to do it and then I can show it to you by turning off the layer I have on top. So that's really thick. And then all of these things can be adjusted and turned off just under effects within the layer. So 
an advantage of inking in Photopea, or just once your inks are pixels, you can play with the line weight using layer styles. Now the other thing I needed to add were the channels for my maze. So the design for this maze now, which is a more kind of freeform maze than the one I'm doing in the morning session, I'll just show you because I want this to always be clear. This little game, like Suffer No Fools, is the text that's going to go with it in the next assignment. So if I paint with, like, say, bright red, it's going to show you, you enter the maze here, you exit it down here. Basically, how do you go in through the head and exit the mouth? I'm going to take my smoothing off because it's slowing things down. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. Fit the whole thing on the screen with Command-0. And this is how the maze works. Oh, that's what I'm trying to test. But I had to build in some openings so it actually worked. So where does it open? It opens first here, and you can go up or you can go down. Yeah, if I go down, this works. You can actually go a few different ways. It's pretty free form. And then I have to work my way all around this, and everything's closed off to me. There's a bunch of dead ends and things. And some of the passages are really narrow. But basically, eventually, I want to get around to this opening here on the side of the mouth. That's the only one that lets me out and to the exit. And if you go, you know, up, there's this false channel here that doesn't lead you anywhere. You can go down on this side, go back down and around. You can go on this side. But you see how it's all locked there. I can go up into this, but that doesn't lead me anywhere. And eventually the only way you can go out is there. So that's the way it's designed. Now the reason I'm doing that and showing you that is because a big part of digital coloring is knowing which shapes you have are contained and which shapes you have that are open. So because it's a maze, this shape, these lines have very self-consciously open spaces. Like it's open there. It's open there. It's open right there. It's open right there. And for coloring, that can pose challenges because sometimes we have closed line work and sometimes we have open line work. So I'll, I'll be able to address all of that. But this is basically my finished line art. And I saved that as a JPEG and I posted it to Canvas. And that's my next step. Now, the gold standard is to not just do clean line, line work like we have here, which is acceptable, that meets the requirement, but professional standard is to have vector line art, just like our logos. And unfortunately, freeware doesn't make that easy. So we looked at vector magic and we looked at Adobe Illustrator for how to do that. What vector magic does, and this was funny from last class, close these, is it does what's called vectorizing. So if I look up vectormagic.com, this is something you can preview. And something I want you to know from this class is whether something can be vectorized easily or not. And black and white line, line work cer certainly can. So if I drag this image in, it's going to automatically try to choose the best settings for turning it into a vector. And the only problem is I have to pay $300 and buy this program for a lifetime license if I want to download it as a vector. <laughs> it will show me what it does. It's a big tease. But then I have to pay for it to actually download it. But you can also do a monthly subscription for, I think it's like $9.95 a month. It will show me. But this is the process of vectorizing. Taking pixel-based images and turning them into a vector. And I love it because it will show its size it will show it side by side. Now the first thing it does is it downsizes. Remember I did this at 10 by 10 inches at 350 pixels per inch. Because this is a website and a preview, it's not going to do as good a job as if I actually had the program because it's going to downsize it just to start. So it says the desktop edition, the thing that you can buy, does not have that limitation. 
And that's why it's taking a little while. So we'll check in on that. The other program we can use is the one we have on these computers, which is Adobe Illustrator, which is another program you can pay for. That can also vectorize, take raster files, turn them into a vector. What cannot do that is vector.com, which is our freeware vector program. But it's just good to know. So let's say you have great line art that you've digitally inked. It's beautiful. And all you want to do is turn it into a vector. Well, you can visit this lab anytime, use Illustrator in the lab, and convert it to a vector. This is how you do it. You open the image in Illustrator. Right now, it is a pixel-based image, even though it's high resolution. And because it was drawn by a computer in PhotoP or on the computer in PhotoP, it's incredibly clean. Then I right or left-click on it with the large selection tool, the top tool, and that opens up under properties, the options to image trace it. This is vectorizing in Illustrator. And then I go to black and white logo in Illustrator 2023, which is on a lot of your workstations. It will actually just say logo, and then you have to choose a two color logo. Then you wanna open up the advanced features, and then you wanna click on the drop down that says advanced, and you wanna say ignore the white. So notice what happens when I do that. The white behind the logo turns off. And now I can zoom in and look at it and it's previewing it as a vector. And if I feel like it's a little too thick, I can take its threshold down and it will re-preview it. That looks good. And I can use these other settings as well to refine it until I'm happy with how it looks. But I'm looking at this and it looks pretty clean. Looks pretty good. So when I'm happy, then I'm going to say expand. And that changes it into vectors. And of course, as a vector, we need to then save it in a way that we can bring it into PhotoP. And to make it similar to the way we brought in our logos from vector.com into PhotoP, we save those as SVGs. Now, SVGs are not my favorite. EPS is my favorite for a portable vector format, but that doesn't uh, work with vector.com. They don't give you the option to save as an EPS, but Illustrator does, and PhotoP supports all of them. But to save it as an SVG, this got me into trouble last time, you have to fit the whole thing on what's called the artboard. And it doesn't matter how you scale it because it's a vector now. And so I'm just gonna hold down Shift and Option, lock its proportions, and fit it inside the artboard. And now I'm gonna say file, save as to my computer. I'm gonna do it to the desktop so I can see it easily. An SVG, which stands for scalable vector graphic. And then for good measure, just so you can see the difference, I'm gonna say file, save as, because it's not just about using the program, it's about understanding this stuff as an intro digital art class. I'm also going to save it as an as an EPS file, which can also work in PhotoP and is my preferred way. And it's the way I always send the vectors to clients. Once I've done that, I can close Illustrator. I don't need it anymore. Okay, so here Vector Magic has done its has done its thing, and we can view it side by side. The vector versus its downsampled pixels. And it does a really nice job, but you'll notice there's little blips every now and then. Now if I open up the, the EPS that Illustrator did, same thing, took my pixel-based image. It also will have little blips every now and again. <laughs> so there is no perfect vectorizing. Whenever you take r pixels and you turn it into a vector, there's going to be little changes. And you can always fix that in a vector program. Now that's the EPS. Let's see what the SVG looks like. It wants to open it in Illustrator. Let's see. Oh, I don't want the one I did before. I want this other one. There it is. That's it opened it in Illustrator. I need to open it just in preview. I can't open.